I think that you have had an aspect of what you might say the Gartner hype cycle. And on open data, I think we've gone through the, 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 the top of that and we're coming back out a bit of a trough in the last few years. So I think that there's a lot that could be a lot better. I think there are definitely sometimes initiatives that are stalled, um, you know, things that are not progressing. At the same time, at a base level, I've seen a huge amount of just systematized work here. It's becoming routine for governments to do open data. I'm seeing it also in uh, the public sector, not, not just like governments or cities, but for example, energy providers that are publicly regulated. You know, I was just recently in Denmark with their main operator of the national grid, and they're now publishing five minute or one minute level granularity data and they even use it themselves. So I think where the state is at the moment is it thing that I think there's a lot more that could be done. There have been some really significant wins. I see some definite positive institutionalization in that it's becoming standard best practice. But I also see it's become institutionalized in the sense of it's kind of gone a bit quiet. That level, absolutely. Will it revolutionize governance or make for really great citizen participation? Mm, that's a lot harder. You know, like giving people information is not the same as them having time to be an informed citizenry. And so the fact that you have data out there doesn't mean that everyone's looked at it or is informed by it. And I think just improving governance is a lot harder. So absolutely, open data can, it's just, it's a huge win just for just running your own administration, you know. It's a win in terms of efficiency and delivery. It's a win for innovation. Will it transform governance? Probably not. It will help it. It's, not it's certainly not bad for it, but it's not, there's many more things that make up better government. Internal efficiency is probably the bigger priority. You know, practically day to day, if you're a bit, if you're working as a civil servant in government, uh, doing your job better and so on. And so I would say that's the priority actually is like, and there are huge wins. The number of times I go and people say, oh yeah, we actually use the open data portal to find data we want rather than go through the internal systems. I mean, every time I go and meet someone, they say that. And so they're just in that sense, and you call me examples, this famous example in the UK, where the UK government saved five million pounds in 15 minutes because the relevant decision maker could find the data on the open data portal in five minutes, rather than spending six months waiting for answers, you know, from an internal memo. There's loads of examples like that. And so I think there's, there's huge wins in that way. And I mean, in general, also, I almost start to talk at the moment often less about open data and more about frictionless data. Really what we're trying to do when you do open data is reduce the friction of getting that data to where it can generate value and insight. Now that could be inside the administration, it could be outside the administration, but it's just about reducing friction and that point applies whether you're doing open data or even doing data that can't be made open for whatever reason. You could be looking to reduce the friction in your system. Well, I think there are two kinds, right, of barriers. So one kind is that people don't want, maybe not even they don't want to do it, but they don't know about, I mean, it's just, it's not. And then the second barrier is, I want to do it, and here's what's in the way. I mean, obviously, in trying to have people do an open data policy or something like that, I really start talking about this frictionless data point right now, which is to say simply, this is a way for you, if you're an exec, you know, often you're talking to senior decision makers, this is, forget even transparency for the moment. This is a way that you get to do public services faster, better, and with more understanding for you at the senior executive level of what is going on. You actually have insight into what is happening in your administration. That is a huge win. And I, so one is just to talk to people about the benefits, the possibilities there for also of innovation, of other companies using this data, and finally of transparency. Like that's a major win. You know, your budget is clear to people. The prioritization involves two parts, value and cost. That's what gives you a priority. Something could be really valuable, but if it's incredibly costly, you might not still do it. So you've got to put the two together. So first off, I would be doing a data inventory. I would just be going to the city and say, what data sets do you have or a government? 
Um, and let's go through that list and do the value cost. What do you think is the benefit that people could get from this data? You might ask external people as well. You might do a small uh, consultation or talk to friendly people in the community. And then you look at the cost. How easy and quickly can you move on these things, right? And that together would give me a prioritization and then you can go down that. There are key data sets, often geographic ones, that I think are high priority. Um, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they really depend on whether you're a whether you're a state or whether you're a city, but geo stuff is always big. Then there are other crucial ones, maybe you know, related to air quality, to elections, whatever is going on. But really, that would be the way. I don't know if people are here aware, we have something called the Open Data Index. And it also exists for cities, where we do a survey of the top 15 data set cities we think could be releasing, and then we able to score cities. And we also use that when we go and work at Viderum or Open Knowledge with cities or governments. We can go through that list and say, oh, you know, what, where are you on these 15 data sets? That's a starting point. I think basically an open source data management system, data integration system would be revolutionary. A lot of what is in the way at the moment of generating as much value as you would want from data is this is stuck in all these silos. You know, even when you've got it listed in your catalog, it's difficult to get the data together. The data quality is often really poor. Like data quality is poor and it needs to get a lot better. And these kind of data flows, open source data flow system could rev really change that. In terms of, um, you think you mentioned blockchain and linked data. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of linked data. I don't think linked data, it, I, I would not, I think there are things, I think we could do linked data light. I think there are ways to do what you want linked data to provide, which is allow you to integrate stuff. But I like to talk about three layers of data quality. The data is tidy, the data has syntax like types. Is it a number, is it a string, basic information. And then finally like semantics like linked data. Now you can, most of the data isn't even tidy right now, let alone being linked data. I know almost no developers that use linked data. It's really complicated. So I advise the moment people focus on tidy and syntax. Come to the semantic level three when you're ready, whether that's linked data or otherwise. So right now I'm not a big, I, I'm, honestly I think there are much simpler things that we could do that are more effective on the data front. Blockchain, I'm a real skeptic. I think blockchain is massively overhyped right now. And I think its relevance for most of the problems that cities have or governments have is very small. Um, it's kind of rare that you want a slow, immutable, distributed write database with you know, hash table history. I mean, it's just really quite a rare use case that blockchain provides for. So. Um, you know, I've done actually quite a lot of people talking to people about it, but I don't think there's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of hype and not a lot of substance there. That's my feeling. I go back to value and cost. So, I mean, look, if there's almost no cost of opening a data set, do it now. The thing is you do need to put in place processes to make sure data keeps being updated, that it's of good quality. So I would focus, I think quality is really important. I think also doing stuff in an agile way. Move fast and iterate. Release some data sets, see what happens, and then keep improving. I would say focusing on data quality right now is important, but I wouldn't say de delay for that. I'd say get something out there and keep iterating. The other thing I'd say, don't do open data on its own. It's part of an, what I'd call a frictionless data strategy or frictionless insight strategy. How do we use data and information to make better decisions, allow for more innovation, and allow for more participation? And it's, oh, it's a part of that bigger strategy that you want to do. And open data is a part of it, but like, look at like, great, you've got open data, but you, like, the data is out of date by two years and it's never maintained. It's no use at all. So you kind of got to be part of an overall strategy where data is maintained, put out there, and used. Not just the technology and you've got the data, actually engaging the community, engaging civil servants inside and outside of government, 
in the fact this data is there and that you can use it. You know, if you've just got it sitting there in this place and no one uses it, it's no value. So I think the other thing is what I would call the community engagement. And I don't just mean outside of government, I mean civil servants. So we also have a project called School of Data where we train government officials and we train civil society in how to use data effectively in decision making, in advocacy, in all kinds of stuff. So that's a lot of the work we do at the moment, building CCAM portals, building data integration, data management workflows, and also advising governments on how to implement data, gov data policies.